videos. My name is Karthik and today we'll be playing some 5 minute games which I'll be sharing my games with you guys uh, for you guys' uh, entertainment and uh, hopefully you guys will have some fun and we'll learn a few things. Alright, so let's get request a game. Let me just move this out of the way. Change it to 5 minutes, play a game. There we go. All right, so let's see. So in the last video, we got to 1340. Let's see if we can increase our rating in this one. To 1400, if possible. We'll see. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, we're up a night, but our pieces are not developed as much. It looks like he's giving me a, oh, but he's asking that in return. Yeah, but I'm get so usually your two rooks are better than, um, better than a queen. So I should technically trade here. Yeah, let's trade. This doesn't look good to me. Uh, can I trade? Take some other way, maybe? No, okay. Um. This as well. Okay, let's take. Hmm. Okay, this should be good for us.
I think that's it. Hmm. Hmm. Damn it. Okay, let's go here again. You go here, I go here. That should be good, yeah. Hmm. The reason two rooks are better than a queen is because rook is worth five points each, so that's ten, but queen is worth nine. But also, if you think about it, a two rooks can go off and do separate things, but a queen can only is only one piece. It can only do, it can probably attack a few different ways, but still, it's like kind of being one position at one time. But a two rook can support each other. A queen can really support each other, um, you know. So um, okay, so now we have a discovery, a check, and that queen's gone. Unless if he goes here, which would have been mate, but so um so let's just go. I didn't talk much throughout this game, but um guess it must have been really focused. But also there wasn't much really to explain a bit. I mean it was just the opening getting the piece out. And here also in the opening we were we were each of us were developing with a plan in mind. And I kinda ex think I explained some of the plan like right here when I moved the queen and attacking this, right? But um, but yeah, so he moved that and then moved the pawn. So he had a good move right there, which I didn't notice, but it's all good. And um, yeah, it was just pretty even. It's pretty even till all the way here. Now right here, when you attack my queen, uh, this is a good spot because I went back, went to this is a good spot usually for the queen and I'm also attacking that. Here he didn't notice it for some reason. So um, yeah, it's always when your opponent makes a move. First thing, what do you always do? You ask what's the threat or why he moved, made that move, right? So um, it looks like the our opponent didn't do that, so he lost her. Because if you ask that question, he would have noticed. Oh, my knight's under attack. So he could either make a bigger threat of either you know checkmate or something else, but or take a bigger piece than the knight, or he could um, go for other things if he wanted to. But at least he would have recognized the threat and then. I think it would defending here would have been a better move, but defending the knight or moving the knight out of the way, because now he just lost a knight for nothing. So um, yeah, he brought his rooks into the game. That was good. My pieces were a little underdeveloped right here. I did make a lot of moves for my queens, but it's okay because I was still able to hold my position together. And um, yeah, I moved this here because because um, of the uh, queen X-ray right there. If the bishop ever moved out of the way. But um, and then got my bishop into the game again. Um, so I mean, right here, um, as I was saying before, I don't really think this is a good move because uh, two rooks are better than a queen. Because as you guys saw, like his queen, uh, will go when we go to the analysis at the end. You guys will see again. His queen wasn't able to do much against my two rooks, and I hope that I had a bishop too. But even if you just have two rooks versus a queen, 
uh, unless if the rooks can't coordinate each other. Uh, if the rooks can't support each other because there are too many pawns in the way, too many of the own pieces or something like that, then sometimes queen can overpower two rooks. But um, in this case, I mean, like I had an extra bishop to support my rooks and my rooks were always like being coordinated most, most of the time and they were supporting each other. So um, it's, um, it's kind of hard to um, play with a, just a queen. So yeah, right here. So my, mm, so right here my bishop is almost trapped. I can't come here. Like, uh, like I could come here for now, but I, I can come here. That's it. I can't come here. I can't come here. And if I come here, if I ever move my bishop right here, then he has this move moving his pawn and just trapping my bishop. So my bishop is almost trapped. Now with this queen move, what his threat was to bring the queen here, and then I can move my bishop anywhere. So for example, let's say I did something like, something like this. Then if he just goes right here, then I, if I go here, he'll take my bishop. If I go here, he'll take it. If I go here, my bishop's trapped. So that was a threat. So um, what I did for that was I am um, right here. So what I did for that is I brought my rook into the game. And at the same time, if he did bring his queen now, uh, like right here, my bishop can come here because it will be supported. So that was his threat right here by moving the queen, like right here, he moved the queen to attack my bishop. Um, so right here, he did have an attack for the pawn right here. But um, I mean, I had an attack for going on his pawn as well, so it would have been pretty even. Um, yeah, just slowly getting my pieces coordinated. Uh, getting into good positions, right? Uh, everything's kind of well protected except this pawn is weak. He could go for that later if he wants, but I mean, I could protect it pretty easily with a rook or something. So, yeah, he was trying to push his pawn, but uh, so the only thing was he had going for him with the queen was this pawn right here. So I had to be careful and get remove that threat because um, that's the only thing that could prevent me for now uh, from doing anything. So right here, um, he did have, if I, I did want to take with this, um, rook kind of provide a battery but the problem was he could take right here and I can't take back so what I decided to do instead was take with this pawn and that way when he moves I can take that pawn and then yeah just after that pawn came apart just I had every, uh, my piece just came more active and active just giving a check and this is a double attack because I'm attacking this way one piece here and two piece second piece right here so it's a double attack you can only move one piece at a time I got that. Now here, um, there is a little bit of risk here because my pieces are not as well coordinated here. Everything's unprotected. So if a queen wants to take one of these, wants to capture one of these, he could. Um, but the way he can capture right now, he doesn't have any double attack. So he needs some kind of check and then he needs something to go for a double attack. So right here, he gave me a check. So he had the right idea. Another thing, since he is behind material, he was trying to give me checks repeatedly and stalemate that way. Because if you give checks repeatedly, that's stalemate. So um, so I had to figure out a way to how to stop these checks in a good way that doesn't sacrifice any of my pieces because these pieces are right now weak. So they could fall apart easily if I make a bad move. So I moved here. That was check. I went back. So he has checks again and again. So right here I moved the pawn. So I notice how I can stop all the checks and at the same time defend all my pieces. So And this seemed like a good move because now... Now this, uh, he can't give me checks anywhere. He can't come here, he can't, even if he goes there, it's kind of nothing, I can bring my bishop back. This bishop is protected by the rook, but these two rooks are unprotected. But this rook can't be attacked right now anyway, because this pawn is doing a good job protecting it. So, um, yeah, so let's see. So brought that into the game, see, and coordinated my rooks again to make sure they won't fall apart. Uh, brought my bishop here because this is a very good uh, protection for both the pawn and the bishop and it's very strong and then from here everything is protected there's it's very hard to make a move now right here I wouldn't have brought the queen right here because now it just sets himself up for a discovery which as you guys saw came along so check anywhere he goes it will be a check again and that's a discovery so yeah um, no it was a good game and uh, let's request another five minute game uh, another blitz and also um, this also is cornering his king once he moves somewhere over there the last rank I can go somewhere to give him a checkmate so if he goes if he goes here I can give him a checkmate but if he goes there that's a checkmate 
But let's say, and it's a double check from the queen. But yeah, let's say he goes there, I can give him a check immediately. So then I would just take the queen. And then after he makes a move, say right here. Or even if he, he shouldn't do that, because then that would be check made for him. If, let's say he moves that, that I would go here. And then even if he does that, that's mate. So yeah, that's why he resigned. It's uh, very hard to play that position and win. All right, another blitz game. Let's go. So I'm going to try a little something here, sacrificing a pawn for some peace activity. So I do have this move. I'll get a pawn that way. Pawn's a pawn. Should I move the rook first into the game? Okay, let's just go for it. Mm. No, I'll just go. For it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. See, so whenever two pieces are separated by one space like that, usually a pawn's a good way to, for a double attack. And I think uh, after this, we'll be winning this game because we'll be up a piece as long as we don't mess up. We're good on time. Yeah, we're winning on time. Okay, we just got to be careful. And this move right here was a discovery. So that's how I saw it. this was attacking this right here. So I had to move this piece where I can go anywhere. And this is just a knight for a knight, but I got an extra pawn. Yeah, there's some, um, there's not much he can do to defend uh, both of them. He has to give up one. So he's, uh, I wouldn't agree with the strategy of um, spending so much time on this move because then he's giving up so much time to think about like later moves where he could use that time, right? He could probably, because he could play for time right now and try to beat me on time if he wants, but um, he's given up a lot of time on this move now. So now he's giving me an option of taking either or, and uh, I think I should take, yeah, I'll just take right now. I was thinking of waiting maybe, but no, I'll take. And bishop's a little bit stronger, so I'm gonna go with the bishop as long as I'm not in under under any danger. I still have this move with the bishop coming right here, attacking the knight, and then bring my other knight into the play. And I'll have all my pieces out. Now he is going for the bishop. I'll come right here, because usually this setup is really nice. When you have a knight here, and then it's facing the knight like two spaces away, it's uh, 
blocking the knight from coming in all of these squares. So that's always nice. So I'll go right here. I'll go right here actually. The reason being he can come, no, uh, yeah, I'll go here. Yeah, so I can bring my ship here. He could try that, but hmm. Should I go for this? What's his plan? I'm not sure what his plan is. Yeah, I'll just go for this. Oh no, that's about, oh no, it's good. Yeah, he can't do anything with this knight anywhere he goes. Yeah, I saw that, but I have the bishop right here. Mm, just bring this right here. Oh, but yes, this pawn that's under attack. Okay, let's just trade queens. So whenever you're up material, you want to trade, but I dropped this pawn right here. Mm, he does have it. No, he doesn't have a check. Okay, let's move the bishop right here. I think we'll have a pretty good game. Yeah, he has a check. Okay, let's just go right there. He has a rook coming into play, which he doesn't care about right now. Um, let's offer a queen trade again. No, but now I'm dropping this pawn. Okay, dropping all the pawns. <laughs> That was like two pawns I gave him. All right, that's okay. Um, at least my knight's now developed, so I'm happy about that. Okay, let's attack his queen. If he lets me do this move, then that would be good for me, because then that's a fork, which he doesn't. But let's offer a queen trade. So now he has to come to this square or this square. If he still wants to protect this square. Which he gives me a trade. So I'll take that. And now this is a threat. Okay, which he doesn't notice. So let's go with the check. Now here, I'm going to take this first. Because it helps me... Um, Use the pieces. If I just take this, then that'll be three for two. I guess I can take this later too. Yeah, I'll just take this, give him a check, because that's better. He takes, and now I can trade down. Yeah, and I think we're good. This pawn is weak, so let's just attack this. He will try to defend, but we have this. No, I think we should be good after this. Just um, give up a rook for a rook, and then. Um, because when you're up just even a bit, little bit of material like you saw, uh, so 1400 guys, sweet. So when you're up even a little bit of material, like uh, one by one piece, at least like something like um, three, pawn, three pawns, so like a rook, or not a rook, a knight, a bishop, um, then if you trade down, the effect of that piece will be fought more. Like if you have 100 versus 99 men in an army, so 100 versus 99, you, they won't feel the difference, but as it comes down, like... Uh, 50 versus 49 and then you know 5 versus 4 and then finally 2 versus 1 they'll really start to feel the pressure when it's 2 versus 1 versus 100 versus 99 there might not be so much effect so same thing in chess as you trade down if you're a little bit higher in material um, it will be good usually just a small pawn doesn't make much of a difference if they play well they could catch up so um, just as, if you're up by a knight or a bishop which is a good thing okay so let's just analyze this game um yeah, just a normal opening, getting the pieces out. Uh, here, what I was trying, looking for was giving up a pawn uh, to gain more activity in terms of start attacking his pawn, and then um, and I could always get his pawn back if I ever need to, but also I thought it would help me develop much faster because he would have moved his knight twice. So um, that was my strategy there. So giving up that pawn, trading off, opening up that, opening opening up this file, but I didn't really want to trade the queens here. And I thought I also could bring the rook in later to attack his queen and gain that file. I don't want to give up anything here for the, you know, like, I don't mind if he wants to trade, but I don't want to ruin my pawn structure, so I brought my bishop back. So here he moved out of the way. I thought he would trade, but since he moved out of the way, that gave me the op opportunity to attack his knight, uh, an x-ray attack. But this isn't the way, so I attacked a pawn. He got my knight, I got his knight, so it was knight for a knight, but I got an extra pawn. Like here, this was a mistake. I don't know what he thought. Maybe he thought I would take. 
usually the first one to take whenever you're trading for like same tier like bishop and bishop usually the first one to take loses so you don't want to take you want to let him take but also another thing is the best move whenever it's like piece of your piece are one space apart like right here from this square so these two are one space apart usually a pawn can attack it this is called a double attack what we did because we are attacking two pieces at the same time and then he can only move one piece at a time unless if he gives a check and then he can move another piece so it's like he gets an extra move but here he can't go anywhere with a check because if he gives me check anywhere here I'll just take him so um yeah I mean he has to give it one piece so he's like I'll let you decide which one you want and just avoids both of them so I could leave it here for a little longer if I want to develop my piece but I thought I might as well not try to squander the opportunity like let go of the opportunity and grab it right now <laughs> sometimes if you complicate things too much it'll backfire on you this is another good some setup for the bishop when it's two spaces away from a knight like this because it blocks the knight from making any progress right here like that it covers all of these squares that the knight can come the bishop covers it and check right there yeah mm. so right here again same setup right here with the bishop anywhere the knight can come it can uh, be attacked but right so this covers this square this square here you already can see the pawn is covered and this is covered by the pawn and he did have if my bishop wasn't here he did have a double attack right here uh, so right here he can attack uh, my queen and my rook so that's attacking two pieces at a time double attack I can only or it's also called a fork because a fork when you has like three things that it can like attack into right and then you can eat it so um so but same thing um, but yeah I can just take this right here it's protected so he took back offered a queen trade so here I started dropping a lot of pawns I guess I would have had to drop either one of these pawns any probably this pawn I would have had to drop unless if I moved my pawn right here so but then my king would have been weak so I really didn't want to do that but yeah he just um, yeah, I just offered him lots of queen trade which he ignored which is good for him because remember the example I was giving like 100 versus 99 versus 2 versus 1 so he doesn't want to trade because he's behind a piece and I was offering him that trade because it would be good for me but um yeah then here another reason I offered a queen trade here is because this rook would would have been x-raying me so got it out of the way now here um, I already explained this a little bit during the game but I had a good double attack here which he didn't notice so I did want to trade down so I was wondering if I should take the bishop first but I had a check with the knight so I decided to do that he took back and then I took the bishop right here and then I mean now just technique and um, using the two rooks to gain some of the pawns slowly and then uh, trade off one of the rooks and uh, checkmate you know with the rook and if you need you can also get a queen as well yeah so it's a good game I hope you guys enjoy that uh, hit thumbs up if you liked it and uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed me sharing your, my games and my knowledge. If you uh, comment down below what you'd like to see and uh, learn, have fun, share and grow, and uh, go play.